So th this program that's going to be proposed is basically a program of empowering and improving the situation. I mean, that, that's the goal. It's not the first time it's been, it's been done. And, um, but at this time, 2007, it's very important that if we start something, that we see it through to the end. Because a lot of people in this country have been getting away with, with murder. And a lot of our great artists have, have died without really, uh, you know, reaching their apex as far as uh, public awareness. When I walk down the street with my bass and a little kid stops me, you know what they say to me? They say, mommy, what's that big thing? And, uh, you know, we would like to get it so that a reach out programs to the community. Because, you see, you see one of the, the things that's been missing is that art's been taken or not existing in the community. Where um, families, they go out to dinner. But how come a family can't go out to an artist's art gallery to buy a painting for the kids' walls and to put up on the walls? You know, how come a family can't go to a concert together? You know, why is it always the aficionados and, and the, um, the diehards? Because they don't know that we exist. They don't know that we love them. They have no idea how many ways a trumpet can be played or drums can be played. They have no idea that the colors, the match of colors that can be thrown on a canvas or the combination of words that can be put together that would really enrich their lives because they are being given the worst kind of vanilla on a daily basis. And we don't get a chance to speak to them because we're busy going to Europe and trying to do our thing. Uh, you know, art is taken seriously enough where you can get a degree in music, a master's degree, bachelor's degree, but then after that, you come to New York and there's no work. All you can do is turn around and get a job teaching in a university where you teach others and they get a degree and then they come to New York and they can't get a job so they get a job in a university teaching others and then it goes around and around so you have this big pool of people with degrees in music who've never done a gig who never played a note, you know. So um, there are umpteen potential programs that, uh, that are on the agenda. You know, th this is a long program. This is just the first step. It's not going to um, come around overnight. You know, it, it's going to take some time and um, perseverance and um, some effort, okay? Uh, because you can't change the fabric of a society overnight, okay? It's gonna take, um, because they've been working at keeping art underground, or they call this like downtown, or uh, for years. You know, art is very effective. You know, there's a political reason why artists are, are not taken seriously. You know, how many times, they, they, you know, you told when you were becoming a, a musician or a dancer or a poet, you know, uh, well, when are you going to get a real job? 
You see, the thing is that the art is a real job. Our souls are dependent on art and music because it feeds our spirit. And what's wrong with America is our spirit is underdeveloped. See, we, you see mo mo most people in America have underdeveloped spirits because it has never been developed. Because they have some sort of, uh, you know, intellectual knowledge, but they really haven't tapped into their souls. See, and what happens when people listen to music, it changes their lives. You know, when, when, when people come to a concert or, or, or they get a book of poetry and they read it, they say, man, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to do, you know. And I'm going to quit my job. Or like some guy, somebody's about to go to Iraq and, and, and you play him a, 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 an alto solo, you say, I'm not going to Iraq. <laughs> Thanks, man, for playing that for me. I'm not going, you see. So, but if they don't hear us, they don't know we exist, we've got to put a big effort into saying, here we are, we exist, this is our music. This is our art, this is our dance, this is our poetry, okay? And give people an option to what they want to choose. And when this happens, I mean, this program is something that we may benefit from and we may not benefit from. But if it continues, the next generation will benefit from it. See, those kids who are 10 years old, in 10 years, if we can start a program, then when they're 20 and the kids the next generation of kids, when I walk down the street with my bass, they'll say, Mommy, is that a three-quarter or a half-size bass? <laughs> is that a Juzak or, or, or a German bass? Because the program will have worked. And once, you see, America is based off of swing of spirit. And once the spirit the, swings this way, you have a lot of sleeping giants. You know, all those people that eat at McDonald's are sleeping giants. You know, I mean, being an artist is not just, a, a, you know, just for, just for certain people. Everybody's got the spirit inside them, and they're waiting for someone to free them. And that's what art does. So <clears throat> when, all, when these programs kick in, this is what will happen. And the idea is to not take no for an answer. Okay, the idea is that we will succeed and things will eventually change. Okay. Now I'd like to invite some people up who are in the audience who have been doing some self-determination acts uh, throughout the years, and we all have been doing them. You know, of course, when, whenever you produce your own concert in the 70s and you get a flyer and you put the, put the flyer up and you get the space, that's self-determination, okay? Because it's like, well, if I don't hire myself, nobody's going to hire me. If I don't produce my own music, no one's going to do it. But at the same time, you know, the, the government of America and the foundations have a responsibility to, if you're given a large sum of money to feed the poor, you're supposed to make sure that all the poor get fed. And what happens is that sometimes when, when large sums of money are given to uh, institutions, is that they don't spread it around. You know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, having the music of Paul Whiteman played or Benny Goodman. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we give you money to, you know, but all the music should be played. All the musicians should get a grant. You know, in, Ho in, in Holland, all the musicians get money to rehearse. They get money to write music. 
it's not just the uh, the king of swing gets money. The uh, the king of space music gets money. You know, all the musicians get money. Okay, and 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 that's what should happen. All musicians and artists should get money to present and develop their work. You know, and all programs that. Well, let, let, let me just say this, because uh, we're going to move on, right? We're going to wrap this up. Um, when Jimmy Carter was president, we had the Cedar Artist Program, which was a program where you would audition and you'd get a job as an artist, a nine to five job. And it lasted one year. And musicians were working for theater companies, for dance companies, and it showed me that it could work. If you put artists to work, the temperament of New York City was beginning to change, you know. And it ended when Jimmy Carter, you know, had his concert at the White House with Ornette Coleman and Cecil Taylor and um, Charles Mingus was there. And I spoke to Ornette Cohen about this a couple of weeks ago, and he said that they were smoking dope that day in the White House. <laughs> and he smelled it, and it was happening. And so you, so you knew at that time that Jimmy Carter had to go. <laughs> but the fact that it had got, that had happened, that it can happen again. <laughs> and, and things can change. Anyway, 